Hey everybody, Sam here and welcome to our channel. Welcome to our soap shed. If you're not familiar with this building and its purpose or creation, this is a storage shed that we bought last year and completely did a conversion, complete build out finish and turned it into a soap making studio home office system entirely for Angela with her soap making and all sorts of other business stuff that we do. There's a link to that playlist down below if you want to see us take this from a bare stud off the lot storage shed into what you see now. A working home office soap studio with electricity, hot water, sink, all sorts of stuff. Disclaimer, this is a working building and it, so it's not prim and proper and beautiful and it, it's just, it's a place where we work. So you're going to see things that are cluttered or not exactly put 100% where it needs to go. It's because it's a work spot, a work zone, um, construction site, I don't know. It is what it is. Today's video is going to be the beginning of some solutions, hopefully, to some problems that we have with the soap shed. Primarily, Angela has these problems. What she's come to realize and notice is that after working in here long days and with making soap and having curing soap and everything in this small 8 by 16 space she tends to have headaches. We believe the headaches are probably from just all the influx of different smells and aromas kind of just bombarding her sinuses throughout a work day and so what we're going to try and do is segregate the smelly parts to their own little closet or thing that I build so that they can live in a separate space than where we, where she works, makes soap, or most often will sit at her desk and do business type work. Paperwork per se, or packing up orders and stuff. We've already moved some things around here in the soap shed as far as preparing to take the steps to build this room or closet. We moved the desk from this front corner over here to the other side of the doorways. It actually sits in front of this second door that we never use, she doesn't use, so it's a fine use of space there. Doing that allowed us to move the microwave here, and then behind the microwave is where we have our product shelf. So all the finished, cured, labeled, packaged, ready to go soaps are on a shelf, and beside them is the curing rack. When talking with Angela, she thinks the number one area that is causing a lot of the scents and kind of bombardments of her sinuses is coming from the curing rack. Makes sense to me. You've got soaps that are curing and, and drying or off-gassing. They're not really off-gassing, but I don't know how else to describe it. They are doing their thing in the open air, so that totally makes sense. Once the soaps are done curing, they do go into boxes, and those boxes sit on a shelf. There probably is a little bit of exchange of smells going on then, but no doubt the number one area is the curing rack. So maybe here's a better look at what we've got going on. We have our product shelf. This is all the soaps that are labeled, trimmed, ready to go. They're in individual cardboard boxes um, separated by scents or types. Next to it, we have the curing rack. This is by far the number one scent producer. <laughs> well with the exception when she makes soap, but that's not every day. These guys here are curing, so they are probably, I don't want to say off-gassing, although that's the only term I can think of. They are curing. We'll just do that. They're drying and curing, so there's a lot of smells around. What we've done is go ahead and move them to the end of the shed here. So our plan, what she's told me the plan is, is to build a closet to go across the front of both of these racks, cut down the side of that one, so we don't exclude or make this window a part of the closet. And then to put doors on the front. Now the doors have to be extremely wide. They have to allow full access to this curing rack for these trays to pull out and go in, plus to leave room for the products. We've got our doors picked already. I'll let you guys see those whenever we get to that point. But really, the goal is to start making some progress on this project without disrupting her workflow in here. So I've got to be very careful and get stuff done. And if it takes me more than today, which it will, I need to put stuff back to where she can still work.
I need to consult Angel on something because I'm thinking it'd be easier to build the closet on this wall where the curing rack and shelf originally was. So, yep, yeah, time to phone a friend. So do you want me to pivot this? Yeah, just remember the, the plumbing. Yeah. It makes me think we should put the bun rack there. Okay. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, we can. I think it goes over top of it. It's not gonna matter if that gets splashed because it's gonna have a surround. Mm-hmm. That's heavier than it looks. I'll pull this forward to simulate the wall of the closet. Is that an okay amount of space you lose? The only thing is, is this is going to have to be spaced over some more. Because remember, this is the one that has to... Yeah. I mean, what do you... What are your Still thoughts, seriously? Because what I could do is I could pretty easily frame this up to go from here and go straight up to the wall and it'll be vaulted with the ceiling. And pretty much just be its own little room there, or closet. Mm -hmm. I have consulted with the soapologist and she agrees or confers that yes, this stuff's going back over here where it originally was when we built the soap shed. Mm -hmm. Just um, flipped. Yeah. So this should make things pretty easy from a framing aspect. I don't have to worry about the vault or the peak of the room in here. And hopefully it won't be too difficult to do. All right, that's all I need you for. All right, cool. I'm happy to report that progress is being made not as smoothly as I would like but I at least have some progress to show you guys after not too long of a work amount of time so I have a little bit framed up here show you guys what I've got here this is all made out of two by three material we wanted something that was not as thick as two by fours but still substantial enough to hold any kind of weight and be appropriate for this installation the problem with two by threes they're they are crooked twisty junky pieces of wood so I'm having to work around that and I've had to call a couple of pieces that's why you will have seen me put a piece up and a little bit later I take it down I did that on the wall and then I did it on the top beam as well not the top beam this one here the jack stud of the header so what I've got here is a piece going floor to ceiling although I just showed you ceiling to me but you kind of get the point this one goes all the way to the top. It is cut to the correct angle way up top for our roof pitch or ceiling pitch. That's locked into the ceiling. It's locked into the floor. It's also got a bottom plate down there. And then 90 degrees to it is the king stud or sorry, jack stud of our header. This one is perpendicular to this one and holds up our double header, which is two two by threes. A little bit of overkill for the door style we're going to put up here but it's correct and it's kind of how i do things over here on the wall we've got a, another jack stud pulled up this into the header and it's attached at the top plate of the wall and the bottom plate other than that it's floating but that's okay because it's not a weight bearing load bearing wall and the doors we're going to be installing are super lightweight and not heavy
Well, I think that's a pretty good stopping place for today, mainly because I am going to stop here for today. <laughs> I need to go ahead and get some paneling for the sides, but also ask Angela a few more questions as far as how much stuff she wants to plan on hanging on this new wall that she'll have right here at the sink. And if she plans on adding things like towel bars or hooks or things, I want to make sure I add the proper structures behind it to support that so there's never any issues. I'm also kind of thinking that'd be a cool place for some wall shelving, maybe up near the top, maybe some crates or something kind of decorative for her to store some of her towels and things. But again, I got to get her opinion and see what she's got in mind too. This is all new wall space, so it would be kind of cool to get creative to see what we can add in this area to further maximize our organization and storage in this small little soap shed. Otherwise, I think it's pretty good progress. I got the main framing members put up in place, got the header built, the tiny little cripple studs way up top there, and everything's looking really good. I was also careful and made sure I cleaned everything back up as best I could. That way, in the case she wants to come out and work and make some soap or do some labeling or order fulfillment, the place is clean and pretty much exactly the way I found it with the exception of my tool bags over there and I think that's about it. But I'll do a once over on everything again before I leave. Alright guys, that's it for this part. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. If you got any questions on this video or anything else otherwise, you know what to do. Otherwise, take care and we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. And then I turn around and get my tools. Well, I clean up those tools too, the chop saw. All right, party's over. Now we can start cleaning up everything.